All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at standard 12B. You guys are going to be able to examine the Holocaust and other examples of genocide in the 20th century. All right, the Holocaust. As part of their vision for Europe, the Nazis proposed a new racial order. They proclaimed that the Germanic peoples or Aryans were a master race. The Nazis claimed that all non-Aryan peoples, particularly Jewish people, were inferior. And the racist message eventually led to the Holocaust, which was the systematic slaughter of Jews and other groups judged inferior by the Nazis. So the Holocaust is a topic we are going to cover unfortunately rather quickly but that's because right now in your 10th grade English class you should be reading the book night um, that's usually about how this plays out you learn a lot about it in your English 10 class um, and this is a topic that you guys know quite a bit about so not to drag it on for a very long period of time but let's cover the unfortunate event that did occur in our world's history. All right, elements leading to the Holocaust. We're going to have totalitarianism combined with extreme nationalism. We're going to have a history of anti-Semitism within Europe. Anti-Semitism just means people who are anti-Jewish against people of the Jewish faith. We're going to have the German defeat in World War I and the economic depression that are both going to be blamed on the Jews. And lastly, we're going to have Hitler's belief in this master race. All right, isolating the Jews. Those Jews that could not be gotten rid of through immigration, meaning to exit the country they are currently in, ship them elsewhere, they were ordered to move to specific cities within the German Empire. The Nazis herded the Jews into overcrowded ghettos, which were segregated Jewish areas. The Nazis sealed off the ghettos with barbed wire and stone walls. The Jews were to remain in the ghettos until deported to concentration or death camps. The final solution. Hitler's going to grow impatient waiting for the Jews to die of disease and starvation. So he's going to decide to take a more direct action. His plan was called the final solution. It was actually a program of genocide. To protect racial purity, the Nazis had to eliminate other races, nationalities, or sub or groups viewed as inferior. These people are viewed as subhumans. They're not normal humans. They are below humans. These groups are going to include gypsies, Poles, which are people from Poland, Russians, homosexuals, the insane, the disabled, the incurably ill, and especially the Jews. So what is genocide? We've talked about genocide. You've probably heard of genocide once or twice before in your lifetime. What is it? It is the systematic and purposeful destruction of a racial, political, religious, or cultural group. This is thought out. This is something planned. It doesn't just happen. This is well thought out. Genocides have occurred all over the world throughout history, but the Holocaust is the most well-known. There are genocides going on even today as I do this set of notes for you guys. It is very unfortunate. Other genocides that we do need to touch on, and you will hear again, this will be brought up again in another standard. We're going to have Armenians murdered by the leaders of the Ottoman Empire, peasants, government and military leaders, and members of the elite in the Soviet Union by Joseph Stalin, which we've done a reading on. You already know this one. 
artists, technicians, former government officials, monks, minorities, and other educated individuals by Pol Pot in Cambodia, and the Tutsi minority by the Hutus in Rwanda. Maybe some of you have seen the movie Hotel Rwanda, which covers the Tutsi and the Hutus and this genocide in Rwanda. All right, so I know that was a quick little cap on the Holocaust and genocides. I wish it could be longer. I wish I could dedicate weeks to this subject because it there's an entire timeline of the events that take place that occur that lead up to the eventual Holocaust. And I mean, it really is absolutely incredible. And I hate to do such a quick little six minute brief recap on what the Holocaust is. Um, so if it is something you are passionate about and you'd like to talk to me more, I would love to discuss this further. I did go to a conference this summer that dealt with teaching about the Holocaust and I have lots of books and lots of readings and other fun stuff that I'd be willing to lend you if you'd like to learn more. All right, moving on. The Allied Victory. On December 22, 1941, Winston Churchill and President Roosevelt met at the White House to develop a joint war policy. Stalin had urged them to help him and relieve some of the German pressure on the Eastern Front. They decided to split Germany's forces by opening a second front in the West. So just like World War I, World War II is going to be fought on two fronts. We're going to have the Eastern Front, which is the border of Germany and the Soviet Union, formerly known as Russia. And then we're going to have the Western Front, which is on the border of Germany and France. All right, so the tide turns on two fronts. We're going to have the war in the desert. The Allies decided to start their assault by taking over North Africa and the Mediterranean region of Europe. In June 1942, the British attacked the Germans in Egypt. As the Germans slowly retreated west across North Africa, they ran straight into Dwight D. Eisenhower's forces on the western coast of Africa. The Germans were stuck between the U.S., and Great Britain's forces, and they're going to surrender in May of 1943. We're going to have the Battle of Stalingrad. The Germans had been stalled outside both Leningrad and Moscow, so Hitler turned his sights on Stalingrad. On August 23, 1942, a bombing assault took place on the city by the German Air Force. Stalin told his generals that the city was to be defended to the death. So by November, the Germans are going to control about 90% of the city as another winter in the Soviet Union begins to set in. By February 1943, 90,000 German troops surrendered because of frostbite and near starvation. The Germans were now on the defensive with the Soviet army, slowly pushing them back west. The Battle of Stalingrad marks the beginning of the end for Germany. All right, now we're going to have the invasion of Italy. On July 10th, 1943, the Allies landed in Sicily and captured it from German and Italian troops one year later. The conquest of Sicily toppled Mussolini from power. The victorious allies, they're going to enter Rome on June 4th, 1944. Right now, you guys need to open up your textbooks to page 941, and you are going to read what happened to Mussolini on April 27th, 1945. So again, open up your textbook to page 9 
41. Do this now. All right, victory in Europe. In 1943, the Allies began to secretly build an invasion force in Great Britain. We are going to have the D-Day invasion. By May 1944, the invasion force was ready. On June 6, 1944, known as D-Day, we're going to have the British, American, French, and Canadian troops fight their way onto a 60-mile stretch of beach in Normandy, France. By July 25th, the forces had punched a hole in the German defenses and entered Paris in late August. I'm not sure why that says on, so we need to delete this. Sorry about that. All right, by September, France, Belgium, and Luxembourg were liberated. All right, next up, we're going to have the Battle of the Bulge. As the Allied forces moved toward Germany in the west, the Soviets were closing in on the east. Germany now was caught in a war on two fronts, the West Front and the East Front. On December 16, 1944, the Germans broke through the American lines in the Ardennes Forest of France. So even though the U.S. troops were taken by surprise, they quickly pushed the German troops back. And this is known as the Battle of the Bulge. If you see a picture of it, You've got the Americans pushing the German troops back, and it looks like a bulging belly. So if you think of like a bulging belly, you think of the Americans pushing the Germans out. All right, Germany's unconditional surrender. After the Battle of the Bulge, Germany was quickly overtaken by the Allies in the West and by the Soviets in the East. On May 7, 1945, the German military offered an unconditional surrender. On May 9, 1945, the official surrender was signed in Berlin. The Allies are going to celebrate what is known as VE Day, Victory in Europe Day. All right. Now, Japan. How are we going to get Japan to surrender? We've got Italy. They're done. We've got Germany. They're done. We still have Japan, part of the Axis powers. We need to get them to surrender. We need to take them over. So the U.S. wants the war and the loss of lives to end. But they realize the Japanese are never going to surrender. On August 6, 1945, the U.S. is going to decide to drop the atomic bomb on Hiroshima and about 70,000 Japanese will die. On August 9th, 1945, a second atomic bomb is going to be dropped by the U.S., this time on Nagasaki. Again, over 70,000 Japanese will die. The Japanese are finally going to surrender on September 2nd. And this is when World War II is finally over. This is known as VJ Day, Victory in Japan Day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that ends this flipped class video. If you have any questions, feel free to come see me or email me. Ask if you would like more reading materials on the Holocaust, about the Holocaust, Please come see me. I've got quite a plethora of reading materials on the Holocaust that I'd be more than happy to share with you. All right. I will see you all on the flip side.